Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday night with Colorado Beef. I'm Chef Jason and hanging out in our barbecue pit studio tonight, getting ready for a fantastic night of appetizer fun. We've got a lot of cool things going on tonight. Two different recipes. We put both the recipe links uh, in the description section for you. We've got some great things uh, just to help you do um, appetizers. Have a little bit of fun, try something different. And hey, if you know me, you know exactly what I do, right? What I do is I like to cook once, eat twice. So one of the things we're doing tonight is all about that cook once, eat twice. So we have a little bit of steak that we had left over, some beautiful, amazing sirloin steak that we're going to uh, have fun with in our recipes as well. Uh, moderating tonight, Miss Julie from Colorado Beef Council is hanging out there. Do we have anybody saying hi on the phone that we need to see hello, say hello to? Not yet. Not yet? We are trying a little different live streaming tonight. We're doing some cross-posting, just having some fun in general. So thank you. Thank you very much for hanging out with us for another edition of Wednesday with Beef. Hey, uh, thank you to the Colorado Beef Council for having us. Like we always say, thanks to our farmers, ranchers, and producers for um, being a part of this amazingness of Colorado Beef. Uh, if you head over to CLBeef.com, that's the Colorado Beef Council website, there is a tab called Cooking. Click on that tab, you're going to find a bunch of recipes, and also the Beef Locator map that's going to help you find local ranchers and producers that have amazing Colorado beef to feed, to feed you, to fill your fridges, your tummies, and your freezers galore. So uh, be sure to head over and check that out as well. Anyone we need to, uh, anyone want to say Jason, hi? Jason, and I won't say his name right. Jason Denier. That one. Jason, good to see you. Nice to see you. Happy, uh... Wednesday to you, so. All right, rock on. Well, we're going to get going tonight. Like I said, we've got two different recipes, uh, fun recipes. One of them is interesting because the secret ingredient in here is apricot jelly, apricot preserves. And we're making meatballs, that's right. And I'm laughing today as I'm buying apricot preserves. And also, wait, 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 to be honest, I grabbed a, gr a jar of grape jelly because grape jelly was my grandma's uh, secret item or secret ingredient in meatballs. Did you have a secret ingredient in meatballs, Julie? Anyone that you know of? My mom didn't take time to make meatballs. No? No. Really? She's German. Not even like, oh, so it's like roasts and yeah. party good things? Yes. All right. Sauerkraut. I, 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 yeah. I like it. I like it. Sauerkraut's, a, sauerkraut's an amazing thing. All right. So first things first, we're going to do some meatballs. Uh, one of the things we need to talk about in meatballs is kind of that ratio of um, liquid, moisture, to beef to breadcrumbs, to eggs, because we really want to make sure that these are not Super Bowls. We're not eating Super Bowls, we're eating meatballs. Uh, and that's super important for us to remember. So, uh, ingredient-wise, I've got some 80-20 ground beef. A little bit more fat, because I like my meatballs to have just a tiny bit more fat as well. We've got some panko breadcrumbs. That's going to help bind them, pull this all together. We've got some eggs. Eggs are going to help pull the beef, pull the breadcrumbs together, uh, and then also uh, add some fluffiness to them as well. A little bit of water just to add some moisture. Uh, and then salt and pepper. We're just going to go very basic with salt and pepper seasoning tonight because uh, when we have barbecue sauce like we have and we have a little bit of apricot preserves and some Dijon mustard, uh, we've got enough salt in there, enough seasoning, enough sugar that I don't want to put too much in here or too many seasonings uh, and have this turn out salt plus salt plus salt equals kind of a big, huge salt bomb. So we're going to keep it easy. We're going to keep it mellow. Let the flavor of the beef shine in the meatballs. Uh, and do all that good stuff. So, what are you laughing at? Roger Coverstein says, from the dry desert of Holyoke. That's, is it really dry out there? Yes. Holyoke? Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, you, we were talking earlier today about, you know, how you feed cattle when it's so dry out, and how, how you get grass, and if you supplement hay, and mm -hmm. all of those things. So, Roger, what are you doing? Are you having to supplement? Are you finding it? I mean, obviously, that grass is is dormant now, pretty much, right? So... Hopefully we've got enough stored for later. And Roger, I promise one of these days, I'm going to come and hang out with you and just spend the day with you, stocking grocery stores where you sell your beef and just hanging out on the ranch and doing beef things, right? Beef things. All right. So meatballs, we're going to start with one pound of ground beef. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm just doing an 80-20. What I'd like to do in here is I like to go through and push that meat down kind of flat like that, just so that we can get the beef into the bottom of the bowl, giving us a chance to season it a little bit better, if you will. And then I'm going to take some fresh cracked black pepper, 
And we always tell you season, season as much or as little as you like. I'm being cautious again, like I said, because I've got the um, barbecue sauce and apricot preserves. I don't want to go too crazy on it. Uh, recipe calls for a quarter cup of panico breadcrumbs, so we'll add some breadcrumbs to it. And then we're going to add our eggs as well. If you go into the comment section down below or the description section, we've got this recipe for you uh, ready to go so you can download it. This is such a fun holiday entertaining uh, appetizer recipe because you can make the meatballs here, scoop them, put them on a pan, take them to someone's house if you're going to friends or family, finish them at their house, or you can put them in the barbecue sauce and then take them uh, with you already set and ready to go in that barbecue sauce. So we're going to add a little bit of water in here just to uh, add some moisture to it. And then that's what we have right now. I'll show you that right there in the camera. So we got a nice little mix of things. Right there, we've got everything we need. So now, just with my hand, I'm kind of going in here and just scrunching. That's a technical culinary term, scrunching. Yeah, it's mixing everything together. And then I'm trying to also judge how wet this mixture is. Uh, if I find it to be super wet, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more breadcrumbs just to take up some of that moisture. I don't want it to be... This is what happens. It gets a little bit wet and we think, uh-oh, they're, they're not going to form. Give it a couple minutes so that... that Breadcrumb has a chance to absorb some moisture. We'll see how firm it gets, and then we'll add a little bit of breadcrumbs, because what we don't want to do is ping pong. We don't want to go from too wet to too heavily bound and then have to add more water, and then we get too wet again, and then we have to add more breadcrumbs. So what I like to do, and we'll show you when we get this set, get everything mixed and then let those breadcrumbs do their job, absorbing some of that moisture and binding. That's what they do. They're going to bind that fat, bind those eggs, bind that moisture. And I can already feel... These are starting to firm up a little bit, which is exactly what we talked about. Questions, comments, hostilities. We'll answer them all. No hostilities. Andy Rouse says hello. Hey, Andy Rouse. Good to see you, sir. All right. So you can already see we're forming a nice little patty, if you will. We've got our ground beef is doing its thing. And it's still pretty firm. We're going to let it sit for just a second. But what I'm going to do is kind of flatten it out a little bit in preparation for adding any more meatballs or at meatballs, any more breadcrumbs to the meatballs. So we'll give that just a second to kind of firm up and do its thing. Um, what we're doing as well, as far as sauce goes, we have uh, barbecue sauce, three quarters of a cup of barbecue sauce, three quarters of a cup of apricot uh, preserves. You can use apricot jelly. Uh, you can use grape jelly if you want to be like my grandma March. Uh, and then a little bit of Dijon. Uh, my question the other day was, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, who was sitting around grabbing a mustard seed and was like, if I grind this and add a little vinegar and champagne to it, it would be wonderful. But mustard is fantastic for this because it gives it a little bit of tang, a little bit of effervescence, a little bit of wow, if you will, and just makes uh, meatballs come out so much better. So, all right, let's double check this here. Do our thing. Donna Grabiel. Donna Grabiel, nice to see you from beautiful Michigan. Donna watches us every single time we are live, and we love it. And Bradley Black Blackburn. Nice to see you, Mr. Bradley. All right, so here we are. You can see we've got that meatball mixture going. I'm going to check it again. It's, it's a little bit loose, right? Just a little bit too wet. So I'm just going to add a couple more tablespoons of breadcrumbs. I'm going to add two just to see where we're at, and then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go through here and scrunch. It's a formal classic term. Absolutely. Right? Scrunch. I'm going to scrunch it together, and then we're going to get that set. And you can already tell it's binding up a little bit more, too, so perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Now, what you have to determine is how big you want your meatballs to be. One of the things we find frequently is it's a lot of work to meatball, right? It's a, it takes a lot of work to meatball. And if you're older, maybe you've had carpal tunnel surgery, meatballing is like, whew, by the time you're done, you've got a, a workout. Well, we're going to make it easy. So we have a scoop. Uh, this is called a disher or a scoop. Uh, and this is actually a number 24. I think it says if you find them at the grocery store, uh, they'll either look like that or they will look like that and have a red one. But the nice thing about this disher or the scoop, if you will, uh, it's great for ice cream. If you ever want to make ice cream. Cookies. Uh, ice cream is great for cookies. That's it. Julie, that's a big cookie. I love it. Who come to house? Can you make cookies for me for Christmas? Um, sure. All right, cool. Deal. So this is great. This is a nice big disher. And what we want is, I want a bigger meatball, right? Um, 
depending on what you're doing for your entertaining, I like a bigger meatball because if I'm going to grill it, smoke it, roast in the oven, roast it in the oven, that meatball's got some substance. So when you eat it, maybe you're not taking four little meatballs. Maybe you're just taking one meatball when you're getting into the holiday assortment of uh, appetizers and delights. So we're going to scoop them a little bit bigger. Keep everybody excited. All right. Gloves back on again. And then all I'm going to do is go into the bowl. I'm just kind of doing a flat scoop. And then I will actually just kind of round the bottom like that. And what I'll do is just put them right here on the pan. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to spray the pan at all. I don't need to because I've got enough fat in the beef. Between the egg, the cholesterol, and the fat on the egg, and the fat in the 80-20 ground beef, these guys should come apart or release from the pan pretty easy. So just do it like that and scoop them, and you're good to go. And the best part is I didn't have to work out at all. I didn't have to meet all, if you will. So we get to say hi to Colin West. Hey, Colin. Nice to see you. Colin is traveling, if I remember right, from his Facebook page. Doing work. Doing work. Maybe went through Colorado. Oh, he's in Idaho. Oh, he's in Idaho. Oh, man. Yeah. Idaho's, you know. Uh, I know now. That's what? where my son lives. Idaho. No, no, no. I was going to say, Colorado's beautiful. Yeah. Idaho is... Yes. Northern. Northern is very I've pretty. I've been Idaho a few times by the Snake River and yeah. that area and Coeur d'Alene. Idaho is... Yeah. Man. Not that Colorado's not man, but Idaho... Yeah, that's Lots true. Cattle. Lots of cattle. A lot more rain. A lot more gloom. Look at it. Like Seattle. Yeah. Right? Nick Perry. Nice. Jared. Mm, Jared, I'll say your name wrong. P I G G O T. Jared Piggott. Okay. Jared so is from Piggott. one of the A stores in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And he loves your technical culinary terms. Yeah. A scrunch. It's yeah. totally a scrunch, right? Yeah. All right. So now here's what happens. Occasionally you get a little bit extra, so just grab that and meatball it back into one. Nobody will ever know, right? That's your. This is for your friend or the one that you keep for yourself. And there you have it. So we made nine meatballs. You could double this recipe. That'll make 18. You could do it. You know, you could obviously make them a little bit smaller, but pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, those meatballs are going to come out delicious. And like I said, if you want, if you're doing things in the house, put them in the oven. Roast them off at 350 degrees in the oven. Let them slow cook. It'll render a little bit of that fat. Uh, you can also throw them into your pellet grill. Throw them into your charcoal grill. Throw them into your electric smoker as well. Uh, if you want to do them that way. We're going to go ahead and set these guys outside in the smoker. And then we're going to get going on our next recipe that we have for you, which is our, it was called beef taco shells, taco tarts. But we're actually going to call them steak taco tarts because we have a uh, cook once, eat twice thing going on down here. Uh, yeah, okay. Let me go throw these outside real quick. Any questions or anything we need to address before we... Good. No? No. Peter Zarek is watching. Peter Zahark. Zahark. There you go. Judson Maddox. Oh. Nice to see you, Judd. Ace Lance. Jane Aronson. I love it. We got some new people. Oh, Colin says it's snowing in Idaho Falls. She come home. It's not snowing here. Yet. Yeah. Supposed to snow, right? In Colorado? Is it supposed to snow? Yeah, okay. maybe. All right. Let me go throw these outside, you guys. I'm going to pop these onto my uh, pellet grill super quick here. So we'll get these guys loaded in. Through the power of television, we already have some on the pellet grill for you because, well, I mean, we don't want you to wait for too long while we got them finished. So, all right. Next recipe. This is a fun one. Um, we're going to save the... Barbecue sauce, apricot glaze for the meatballs for a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and turn on our burner, get our pan heating up. Next recipe is super easy, and basically uh, what the next recipe is, is right here. So this is our tiny taco beef tarts. And the cool thing is, we're supposed to use 93.7 ground beef. But yesterday we were cooking for a group and I happened to have a little bit of picanha or culotte or top sirloin cap steak, uh, whichever we're calling it. I, had, I happened to have a little bit extra. Uh, so I diced this up nice and small because I thought what a great way to cook once, eat twice. And I think this recipe uh, will really do good with ground beef. It would do great with leftover skirt steak cut very, very fine. Uh, this um, uh, culotte 
would be is great as well. So we're just going to give that a whirl. Now, again, because we're going to be putting these in the little phyllo shells or the phyllo shells, if you will, uh, whichever you're calling them, have to keep that beef bite sized because you don't want a huge slice of steak in this tiny little shell when you go. Th these are meant to be one or two bites, depending on the size of your mouth. So if it's a two biter, you don't want to have to bite it and pull a whole strip or strand of beef with you. So I like to keep it bite sized that way. These, you can pop these like Tic Tacs, right? You can eat oh, them yeah. just like a Tic Tac. So, so is, is it phyllo or is it phyllo? I mean, uh, yeah, potato, potato. Oh, okay. I don't really know. You know what? I always say I always say phyllo or phyllo. Uh, sometimes, fi like this is spelled phyllo. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's spelled phyllo, so oh. I'm not real sure. Okay. Like, depends. But I usually say uh, phyllo goes, somebody will correct us, right? Phyllo, phyllo, tomato, potato, onion, pepper, who knows? All right. So these are available in the frozen section at your grocery store, um, usually in the dessert area. So if you find um, puff pastry sheets, puff pastry squares, um, pound cake, you'll usually find the uh, phyllo shells in that area as well. They come in a pack of 15. Recipe makes 30. Uh, so get them out of the package like I'm doing. I've got a couple sheet pans or half sheet pans ready with some parchment paper on it. Just so that, um, I always like putting parchment on my pans. It helps me with cleanup. Uh, I don't have to spend hours and hours and hours washing dishes when we're done. So we'll go ahead and get these guys out of here. Out of the package. We have our pan heating up over about medium high heat right now. I'm gonna adjust it down just a little bit so it doesn't get away from me. We'll get that set. All right, pull the film back on these guys. Uh, even though these are in the freezer section, if you're, if you're making these today for tonight, uh, getting them ready or getting them prepped, just leave them out on the counter. Uh, it's not going to hurt them. They are a pre-cooked shell, so it's not like they're going to get defrost and, and soggy or melt away or anything. They just keep them in the freezer kind of to preserve them so they last a little bit longer. There is butter in here. so. All right, we'll get these guys lined up here super quick. Do -do. This is an easy appetizer as well. Uh, one of the nice things about this too, you can totally prep these ahead of time, being careful because there is some moisture in that beef. Uh, you can prep these ahead of time and then uh, transport them and finish them on site or finish them at your friends or family's or neighbor's house uh, when it's time to eat dinner. Just don't make them in the morning, pop them back in your refrigerator, let them sit all day long uh, because they will absorb all that moisture plus a little bit of that moisture in your fridge and get soggy. So try to make them maybe an hour, an hour and a half before you're going to your event. Uh, that way you'll make sure that was broken. Make sure that they stay beautiful and delicious. Right. All right, get these guys lined up like that. So uh, we've got our pan preheated. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of oil to the pan to get the onion started. I'm adding about two tablespoons of oil. We've got some nice diced onion. Can you see that right? mm -hmm. What are you laughing at? Um, you say filo, I say canarito. Guess uh, who that's from? Colin says canarito? Well. I say Colorado. It. You can't really tell when you're just writing. But he probably does say canarito. Yeah. yeah I know. All right, so onions. We're going to give these guys a saute. Uh, once again, what I did on these onions is I diced them small. I diced them fine. Uh, and I wanted them to be diced that way because uh, I want to make sure these onions, uh, I don't want them to be the only thing you taste. I want them to soften and shrink and melt into the uh, uh, beef so that it becomes one of the ingredients, not the only ingredient. So that's why you put them just a little bit smaller. So if you notice your pan is quenching a little bit of heat and getting cold, turn it back up. I'm trying to just get a little bit of color on these onions here, and then we'll add our garlic. I'm gonna come visit you. Do it. Because. I'm gonna try to clean out the cold this time. It's kind of funny. I'm watching it on the laptop back there. Oh. And there's a delay, so it's interesting how that delay works. Probably glad there's a delay, right? Just never know what's gonna happen. All right. As those onions cook, we're gonna add the garlic in. Definitely wanna get that garlic cooked. It takes off some of that sharpness or a little bit of the burp factor, if you will. Uh, that way, that acid and, the, and the, everything in the garlic is, is mellowed out a little bit so you don't eat these things and then an hour later have a little garlic 
garlic as well. Get those onions cooked. And then we're going to add, sorry, literally just cut them. Alright, then we're going to add the beef in here. And like I said, just some extra sirloin that we had, or a little bit of that picanha, if you will. And I'm just bringing this back. I cooked it nice, medium, rare yesterday. We're going to bring this back just a little bit. Now, because the beef was seasoned, uh, even though the recipe calls for a little bit of salt and pepper, uh, we're going to just go light, light, light on that. It also called, uh, calls for cumin. What I thought would be kind of fun is maybe add your favorite blackening seasoning. That way uh, you get, you know, cumin's really nice. A lot of blackening seasoning has cumin in it. So add a little of your favorite blackening spice, right? Because these are beefy top tart with taco darts. So that's okay having a little bit of that extra love in there. All right? And we're not looking to go too crazy on here. What we're trying to do is just re-warm the beef a little bit, cook it up, make sure the onions and garlic get cooked and have a little bit more softness in them. Less crunch, if you will. And then taco sauce, just basic taco sauce. You can use the store brand. You can use the national brand. Uh, you can use mild. You can use hot. Uh, that's the beauty of this recipe, pretty versatile. Now that I add the taco sauce, I'm going to turn the heat up. I don't want it to splatter. I don't want it to get too crazy or get away from me. So I'm just going to shut that off and let it kind of finish itself off here. So if I don't have taco sauce at home, can I use salsa and just, you know, throw it totally. in the, blend yeah. it up, make it more smooth? Yeah, salsa would be great. Um, if it's thick or if you have pico de gallo, chop it up fire, add it in there. You could have a little tomato sauce. You could add a little uh, clamato if you wanted to, or a little tomato juice, yeah. mm -hmm. whatever you, I think you could, the beauty of this is it's pretty versatile. I mean, you could take this from being uh, Hispanic flavor, Mexican flavor, to a little Italian flavor if you want, a little marinara sauce, okay. uh, and do it a little bit differently as well. So yeah, I think you could live it up. So let's get those guys ready here real quick. Then I'm going to show you a little bit of the accoutrement. That's going to go on these guys as we garnish them. But I'm going to show you a fun little tip tonight because not everybody has pastry bags laying around the house, right? You have pastry bags laying around the house? Yeah, not many people do. So we're going to show you how to add a little guac and sour cream to these without having a pastry bag. We're going to show you the best hack on earth to uh, uh, make that pastry bag effect without having it. So I'm grabbing just a teaspoon here. Some of my dishes out of the way. I'm just grabbing a teaspoon. And what I'm going to do is go through and just fill these. Go through and start adding my beef into here. Oh, it smells so good, too. I'm pretty excited because this is dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I say, you can eat a whole bunch of these. So try to be careful. Make sure you're getting the meat in there. I'm not getting it all over the pan like I'm doing. Rookie job over here. Well, you're, you're hurrying. I'm hurrying. We don't want to make this a three-hour event. All right, so just go through and get these guys added in there. I'm trying to be mindful of how much sauce I get, how much beef I get to try to make sure I get kind of a nice mix so that I've got moisture in here. It's going to add to the softness of this, so you'll get some crunch, but then you'll get you know a little pocket of sauce and a little pocket of beef under the cheese I'm about to put on here. So, Any questions? Anybody thinking of making these for the holiday season? Yeah, if you go over to um, beefitswhatsfordinner.com, that's where we get a lot of the recipes we do. The, the, the great thing is, is you can type in the cut of steak. So let's say you're like, oh, no, I have extra ribeye steaks. Uh, you type in ribeye steak recipes, and it's going to pull up, you know, how to cook steaks, give you all the tips. It's going to pull up all that stuff uh, and then give you some great recipes as well. Some things to add to your fun. All right. So that's that guy. Yep, and I put the recipe links in the chat. So oh, if you cool. guys are haven't looked at the chat, take a look. All right, a little bit of cheese on top. Just trying to do a little pinch over each one or, or over two kind of, but trying to get enough cheese to melt on here. You know, Mexican cheese, that's going to be the queso uh, azadero. It's going to be a little cheddar, you know, uh, just a good blend. There may be some Oaxaca. Mm. My favorite cheese to say, Oaxaca. So, and I'm just doing a little cheddar on this one. Uh, you could finish it with some cotilla over the top as well. But pick your favorite cheese. Like I said, if you're doing 
the Italian uh, flair, add a little bit of mozzarella over the top, of that red sauce you're putting in here, and you've got a tasty, tasty treat. All right, so let me clear this out of here super quick, because when I go out to uh, add these guys in the um, pellet grill, I'm also going to bring the meatballs back so we can uh, get those ready with the sauce. So let me get this set here. second here. Talk amongst yourselves. Give me one second. I'm going to go do a little switch switcheroo. Uh, recipe wise, you're talking about, or time wise, I won't walk away from the camera yet. Time wise on the grill in the oven, however you're doing this, you're talking about five to seven minutes. Keep in mind the shell's already cooked. The beef is cooked. It's warm. Just trying to get a little melt or a little gratiné on that cheese. So we'll go ahead and pop these out. Bring the meatballs back in. We'll talk through that next. It's working as planned tonight, Julie, right? I dig it. Is I shouldn't say anything, right? Mostly. Probably jinx it now. Great. Alright, we'll throw these guys on our grill. Right here. Mm. Meatballs! Alright, there we go. Meatballs off the grill. So, what we will do now is, so meatballs are done. Uh, I had temp checked them outside. They hit that 155, which is exactly what I wanted. Get the burner turned on. Now, as I'm heating up my saute pan, I want to get this stuff in there because the last thing I want is to add the sauce and the preserves to a hot pan and have it start splattering or dancing or spitting all over the place. So we're going to get it in there as it heats up. And just pick your favorite barbecue sauce. I've got a kind of a smoky, sweet barbecue sauce on here. Uh, not too sweet, but it's got a little bit of sweet to it. Not a lot of heat either. Uh, if you want to add heat and, and spice to it, you can definitely pick your favorite hot barbecue sauce. Uh, Jason Denier, who's watching, is a hot sauce fanatic. Uh, he eats sauces that I think make most people cry. Um, so he'll probably pick... Literally, I'm not even kidding. We were talking about hot sauce once, and he eats uh, like madness. So, all right, so heat that up here. We're just going to heat it until it starts to uh, kind of that uh, preserve start to come uh, loose up a little bit. We have our whisk that we'll get in here, get everything whisked as it warms up. And then, basically, this is just a little barbecue sauce glaze. So, we'll add those meatballs in here, kind of toss things a little bit, get a really nice glaze going. Uh, this will be this will come out being really nice and like I said this is this transports well it travels well you could also put this barbecue sauce in your slow cooker uh, you could put it in your uh, in a pan and transport it that way or slow cook them too and then haul in your slow cooker uh, the nice thing about those slow cookers is they've got the insulated blankets you can put around them mm -hmm. and take it with you uh, they usually work out real well a lot of them now have vented lids too so you don't have to worry about when you transport it. You can strap the lid down, but there's a hole in there that gives you just enough venting so you don't have to worry about your slow cooker exploding in the trunk while you're driving to Holyoke to see Roger. That's right. Right? All right. They even have a new crock pot that's like inside like an igloo piece. Who has that? Um, oh, I've seen that before. Yeah, it's not a traditional brand. I'll have to look it yeah, up. Yeah, it's like, where? Oh, you know where I saw them? Stock Show. Yes. They, everybody had them at Stock Show down yes. in the pens. Yeah. Which, when is Stock Show? It's coming up, right? In, it June, is. In January. January. Wait, you told me the dates today. They remind me again. January 7 through 21. 7 to 21. Uh, last night, we spent a little bit of time at the new CSU Spur campus, which is right down in the National Western complex and I will tell you uh, I'm so I'm excited for stop show this year I really am I think it's gonna be great and I'm beyond ecstatic for that spur campus to do some more stuff because that kitchen is like a chef's dream okay so I'm gonna go ahead carefully if you're wondering if I have feeling left in my hands nope not much so carefully grab those meatballs out of here we'll add a little bit of meatball action in there 
These guys glazed up nice. Get off there. There we go. There we go, just like that. So then just turn your flame on kind of medium low and let them just slowly percolate and do their thing. And then as you want, you can go through and flip them. Uh, you can take your spatula and you can kind of turn them as well, but just get them glazed. We, all we want to do now is get that barbecue sauce to impart a little bit of flavor into these. You want to coat them and then pour them into your favorite dish. Uh, if you're serving these right up at your house and you don't have to transport them, serve them into a nice, or put them into a nice serving bowl. Uh, put a fork in there so everybody can grab them or put a little thing of toothpicks next so everybody can grab uh, next to them so everybody can grab one with a toothpick and we'll be good to go. All right. So we'll let these guys sit for just a second here. We've got that on low. Now, one of the things we talked about while I'm waiting on the cheese to melt was you want to make these beef steak tarts look nice. You want to do a little foo-foo. You want to make it look pretty and fancy and you're thinking, I don't have a pastry bag like those fancy chef guys on TV have. So here's what we're going to use. When you run out of pastry bags, you go to a Ziploc bag. But what you want to make sure is, here's the Ziploc bag I'm using. Just a standard zipper bag, right? Don't pick one that has a gusset in the bottom. Because then what happens when you cut the gusset, you actually cut two to three holes in the bag. And when you go to squeeze it out as your pastry bag, uh, yeah, sour cream everywhere. I'm not going to tell you how I learned that, but let's just say there's a reason I know what happens. All right, so if you want to make it easier, what I'll do is put the bag in my hand, and I'll turn the bag kind of inside out so I have a place to catch it, right? And then I'm going to dirty another spatula. Then I'll take a little bit of my guacamole. I'll put a little bit of guacamole, right, like that. Okay, and then close your bag slowly. Squish the air out while you're pushing this down into the corner. And look what you just made. Pastry bag. Brilliant, right? And you didn't have to spend seven bucks on a pastry bag. So. And you didn't have to clean that pastry bag. Right. You just have to clean the spatulas. But, I mean, that's still more fun. Uh, yeah. 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 Cleaning, pa uh, cleaning pastry bags is miserable. Yes. Literally no fun. Because if you don't clean it right, then all of a sudden you go to use it the next time and you're like... Oh, it's the pastry bag. Oh. Same thing with your sour cream. Hold that up right. We're going right in that corner again. I'll show you. We're going to leave that corner alone until it comes time to garnish these guys. We don't want to do anything until it is garnish time. All right. So right into the corner again. Squish everything down there. Push out the air. Give another little push it out there and hold it. Just like that. So there's our pastry bags. Meatballs are meatball, and you can see that. Those look good. They're blur, 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 and doing their thing. Let me run out and grab the taco tarts. Steaky beef taco tarts. Diane Nargan says this looks better than the bowl of cereal she's going to eat. Oh, man. But what cereal? What cereal? I don't know. Diane, what cereal are you eating? Because I'm a cereal connoisseur. I'm totally curious. It's probably like great nuts. this right here right oh yeah this. yeah we'll just sit here and drool thanks donna all right check this out you guys i'm coming up close we're doing beef cam look at those right there hold on i'm watching myself in the look at those bad boys right there so cheese is perfectly melted life is good we uh have a hot glove insulated glove to make sure we're not burning our hands and that's what I was looking for, a little bit of cheese, because like we said, the beef is already cooked. We just kind of refreshed it, rewarmed it, if you will. Um, the cheese, I wanted it to just melt a little bit. Turn off my thing. And then what we're going to do is, we're going to move this over so you can see. Go through and just cut a little corner. Now, the minute you cut the corner of that bag off, find the corner and make sure you throw it in the garbage. Listen, I'm telling you from experience, you don't want to be the person that gets that corner. Uh, do you want to come in a little closer? We'll show yes. you what we're doing. Thank you, thank you. All right. So just a little squeeze. Like I said, everything went into the corner. And I just made myself a little pastry bag out of a zipper bag, Ziploc bag, food storage bag, whatever we're calling it these days. All right. You have a couple of viewers that do that same thing with uh, for deviled eggs. 
Oh, come on. I love deviled eggs. Well. So much. I yes. I do that, too. But I never thought about taking the top and, like, yeah, putting your hand in it and flipping it over. Yeah. yeah, I was just making a mess and have to Ziploc through the yeah, egg yeah. stuff. Yeah, it happens to all of us. All right, and then a little guacamole next to it. And now you have a fun, just fun way of decorating. It looks nice, and your guests think you're kind of fancy, and what the youngsters call bougie these days, right? It's all right to be bougie. And then if you want, put a little green on top, do a little chopped cilantro. You could do, oh, here we go. Now, here's the problem. We have a little bit of guacamole avocado pulp, right? So if you get a little clog, slowly push until that clog comes through, then you're good to go. Someone didn't mash the guac like they were supposed to. Chunky guacamole. All right, and then just like that. And then, like I said, uh, if you want to do a fun little garnish on there, let's do a little green onion action. What do you think? Sure. Cut those tops off so we get the pretty parts. What did Diane say for cereal? Did she answer us back? She did. She said Cocoa Puffs. I mean, it's not bad, right? Cocoa Puffs are not bad at all. All right, so... What I like to do then is super, super fine. I'm going to go really, really fine on these. Right there. Right, right. Again, because this is a smaller dish, I don't want to have this giant chunk of onion. Uh, sometimes that can be a little bit offensive. So I want to cut these really fine and thin, giving me just a nice garnish, not like, wow, that was great onion dish she made. And a little on each one. Perfect dish to eat when it's snowing out, when you're entertaining for the holidays, all that good stuff. And then if you want, you can always go ahead too, sprinkle a little rub on the top. Put a little, put a little of your yeah. Cajun rub over the top, just for a little more garnish. Um, but that was, I think that's super easy. And if you look at, I mean, we've been doing this, uh, we've been live for what, about 40 minutes. So if you look at both of these dishes, I mean, total prep time to do this because we had that leftover steak to repurpose that we cooked yesterday and ate today. Cut our prep down huge. Our cook time, everything. So, I mean, you're looking at maybe, what, 25 minutes mm. to make this? Mm. Probably took me longer to grocery shop today than it did to actually make this. So, time saving as well, which is important to all of us because everybody's busy and has a lot of things to, uh, going on. Meatballs as well. Uh, not a lot of cook time. I mean, obviously we're waiting for our other batch on the grill, but these were about 30 minutes cook time for the meatballs from raw to fully cooked. Um, you could absolutely make the meatballs today and put them in a pot or put them in a dish uh, and then just reheat that tomorrow. So meatballs are perfect today for tomorrow, but you definitely want these beefy taco uh, ones to be uh, fresh and, and delicious so that when you bring them to your family, your friends, they eat it. It's got some crunch. It's got some softness, and it's very, very delicious. Questions? So, yes. So, Jane Bottom. Aronson wants to know if you're doing it in the oven, what temperature and time? Uh, temperature on the beefy tacos, I think, is safe and sweet. Mm, I'm guessing she's thinking meatballs. What, uh, yeah, 350. If you're doing the beefy taco tarts, it's 350. Meatballs, I was doing at 375. So beefy tarts, literally seven minutes, probably of oven time or grill time at 350, and then uh, meatballs I did at 375. And those took about a half hour at 375 because they were bigger. And I was wrong, she did mean tacos. Oh, okay, yeah, tacos, five to seven minutes at 350 degrees. Perfect. Super fast and easy. Roger Coverson also said when he does meatballs, he uses frozen cut up hash browns instead of breadcrumbs. Oh, nice. Yeah, gives them a little texture. Those are, oh, no, porcupine balls are with rice. Yes. Right, with rice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I like that. Hash browns give, gives them a little bit of texture. I definitely like it. Ooh, a little softness, too. Yeah. For sure, so. Yeah. Looks like we have more questions rolling in. Mm, no. no. All right. I love it. I well, think... like we always say, you guys, if you're looking for some great recipes, head over to cobeef.com, the Colorado Beef Council website. So much information there. Uh, you'll find a lot of the beef promotions. You'll find a lot of good 
uh, recipes. And if you go to the cooking tab, you can click on the cooking tab, find a lot of our recipes we've featured, find some great things from our friends at NCBA, and then also find that beef locator map. So you can find folks like Roger and every one of our ranchers and producers that are out there working their butts off to make sure you've got amazing Colorado beef. Uh, last night we were able to showcase Colorado beef to some importers uh, that came in from Japan. So it was uh, very, very cool to see what you all do. I'm so honored to work with our ranchers, but great to see what they do and to be able to showcase Colorado beef to uh, the Japanese folks that were coming in. Question? Um, Donna also says she uses Parmesan cheese instead of breadcrumbs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little Italiano mix, right? Mm -hmm. That's You could totally do that. Instead of breadcrumbs, put some parm in there and then rock these things in your favorite marinara. Uh, and there's some marinara I saw the other day that has green olives and black olives in it. Ooh. Oh, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. That would be great for the meatballs as well. So, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, so don't forget, head over to cobeef.com. Tons of information for you there. Like we always say, big, huge thank you. Uh, to the Colorado Beef Council for having me tonight and allowing me to host this fun thing here in our kitchen. Uh, and then thanks to our ranchers and producers that work so tirelessly to, uh, um, to do what they do. Uh, and I'm excited. We're going to be doing a little live in the field coming up with one of our farmers and or one of our ranchers and producers here in Colorado. So I do uh, get up early one morning, I'm skip Starbucks, but head out to my favorite truck stop on my way out to Briggsdale, Colorado. And I'm going to spend the day on a ranch hanging out with one of our ranching families, just seeing what they do. But we're going to video it, and we're going to make a cool video, so we're going to give you a glimpse, no holds barred glimpse, into the day in the life. So we're going to do everything, vaccination, boosters, ear tags, maybe branding, weaning. It's going to be a busy day, and I'm super stoked because I, I love that. Man, I absolutely adore that. So any last-minute things before we go? Nope, everybody just says yum, and thanks. <laughs> yeah, hey, thank you all for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, it means the world to us when you spend a little bit of time with us, and we hope you got some great things out of this. Uh, next month, we're going to be doing, I know, I, I think I accidentally posted, we're going to be doing prime rib, but we're, Julie and I are concocting what we're going to do. We did prime rib last year in the month of December. We're going to come up with something wow uh, to do for our beef live uh, one of the Wednesdays in December. So we'll get you ready for the holidays, get you ready to ring in the new year, come up with something fun for you. But as always, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, being in your living room and hanging out on your computer with you. So have a blast. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you next week, next month, December, with another live. And thank you to Julie for uh, moderating with us as well. But we'll see you next month. Another live with beef.